Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. So I have a fun personal project that I wanna share with you today because I feel like maybe you would wanna learn them. All those keychains, those hotel keychains, they're all the rage. I have one that's sitting right there over my shoulder. We are going to cut one of those out in acrylic and we're gonna do it on the Glowforge, which is right there. So my sister's sister-in-law is a, which that was really hard to say. That's like a tongue twister, sister's sister-in-law. She is a teacher in the Boston area and she saw these like really cool um, to-go packs that have like things for girls. Uh, she is a teacher of like the sixth grade. So, you know, all those little girl things that we have going on. So what she is going to do is she's going to create these packs that have, you know, the girl things that we need. And she wants to like dress them up and make them fancy. And she doesn't want to do the bag per se, but she wants a little keychain to like dress them up, make them look really cute. Of course, I'm the crafty one of the family. So I am doing that for her. I'm going to show you how to do it. So it's going to be quick and easy and simple. I sure hope that all of my tutorials are quick, easy and simple, but I feel like this one's gonna be the easiest. Only because we are gonna be using a free program called Design Space. That's what you would have to use with your Crickets. I personally am going to be using the Cricut Access feature because I already pay for it and it has like 30,000 images available. So it's a lot easier than buying SVG files or trying to create your own through Inkscape or looking online for free ones. Like it's just so much easier because it's all like in one library and I, all I have to do is like put in keychain and something pops up. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gather my images in Design Space and then I am going to export them and put them into Inkscape, which I'm sure sounds really confusing, but I swear it's not. And then I'm gonna finish up the keychain design and then I'm gonna put it in the Glowforge and then I'm gonna make the keychains and then I'll show you how to assemble the keychain hardware. I mean, it's, it's I'm sure I've already lost you. I swear it's really easy, like it's super easy. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna leave up my inspo pick that I was sent because that's what we're going for is that little that little thing. And it's not really the bag that we're looking for. It's really just this little thing. It says, let's go girls with a cowboy hat. You can see I already have a design space window already popped up and I already have a cowboy hat and what looks like a hotel keychain because that's the design I wanna go for. So if you don't have design space, I was telling you about this earlier, but it seriously is the coolest thing. You go over here into images and this thing pops up. I did cowboy hat. Do you see how many images of a cowboy hat there are? 6,100. And so you have like all these images. Now the same thing with the hotel keychain. Oh, look, their file size, library size, 361,000. Did I say 30,000 earlier? I was way off. So it's a lot nicer to have everything all in one spot versus trying to like find files on my on my computer or on the internet or try and find them through Etsy to buy them. Like it's just peace of mind and I think it's like five or 10 bucks. So anyways, hotel keychain. We are going to just search one up and the very first one, it's a soccer ball. That is not what we're looking for, but you have like all these things. I'm not even quite sure what those are because those don't look like he's changed either. But anyway, so you just keep scrolling. You got all this stuff like this. Oop, this one looked really good. It has like a key. Um, anyways, so let's say we're going to scroll down. Here's the one that I had chosen. All you have to do is just press that button and then go over here and to add the canvas. Okay, so I have both of these images or right here, right? I have this one and it has two different things, two different layers, and then I have my cowboy hat. I want, I like the vibe of the cowboy hat being more of an outline than something that's like really thick like this. The whole premise of taking inspo picks is not to directly copy what the original inspo pick was, but we're gonna take some ideas out of it, right? So like my sister's sister-in-law, her name is Missy. She was like, I really want that cow, that cowgirl hat, which is fine. I'm going to find a different one, one that I like the most. So we're just going to have this one right here and I'm going to change this over into black. Doing black is key, key, key for doing this. Key, 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 key chain, you know, get what I'm saying. But anyways, it's key. You have to change everything over to black. Okay. And see this one right here has two layers, right? And if we change this over into black, what's going to happen is, is everything's going to be black. So what we need to do is, is we need to take this and we need to ungroup. So right click and press ungroup. Okay. We're going to drag this over and now we have our two sets and then this black keychain. 
the two sets of the keychain is still the shades of pink. So we're gonna select all of those and I'm gonna change it over into black. Okay, now for the super easy part, we're just going to zoom in and fill up your screen as close as possible. You don't want to cut off any of your images, but you just wanna make sure that you're like super big and into uh, the entire image. The closer the image, the better this uh, scan's going to be when we go over into Inkscape. So I'm gonna scoot these over real quick. If you notice that in Design Space, you have this like um, zooming thing, you can't get rid of that. So we're gonna have to try and avoid putting this over here, because if we take a screenshot, now we have that little gray, right? So we're gonna avoid that. And then this one right here, I'm gonna just rotate it and put it all in my screenshot. You like that? Okay, I'm gonna move myself over just a little bit. And now we're gonna take a screenshot. In the max, what it is is Command Shift and four. I'm gonna slide this over just a little bit. So Command Shift four, and this like little aiming tool pops up. We are gonna draw a box around the three black images that you have. You see how there is like that gray box and it's all around that. If you do this and you cut off the cowboy hat, or if you do this and you cut off the bottom of the keychain, that's not gonna be a good scan. It's not gonna look good. So we wanna draw a box around the entire thing. There it is. Okay, then what we wanna do is open up a new window in Inkscape, and then I'm just gonna take my screenshot, I'm gonna drag it in. Just press okay. We don't have to do anything else, just pressing okay. And then all you wanna do is right click and then press trace bitmap. Nothing will pop up. We're just gonna press, press update. Oop, and there it is, right? Our three images, there they are. Look at that. We're almost finished with the hardest part of the entire project. Okay, so if you were doing like colors and stuff like that, this is why it's important to do it in black. Black gives you the crispest scans there are. If you do any other color, it's going to distort the image just a little bit. So the black is best. Um, if you do have colors or you try to do it col um, different colors, you can bump up the threshold and it'll start scanning for more. If you notice when I did that, the black got a little darker. It's because it's doing more of a heavier scan. So if you have um, super light colors, go up. If you have like super dark colors, you want to go the opposite way. The standard 0.45 that pops up every single time you open up a new window, that's the standard. I think, in my opinion, that's the best for if you're doing black and white scans. You just press update. Um, I don't mess with anything else. So like the speckles, smooth corners, optimize, I don't mess with anything else. And then just press okay. It will look like nothing happened, but trust the process, it did. You wanna come up here to the right and just press that X. And then we're gonna drag down the very first one. Now, how you can tell that what is your scan is your scan and not the original screenshot is, is you see the one that I drug down and this is the back of the canvas and you can see that there's a line because that's the back of the canvas. That's the one that you want. This one right here where if we drag this around and you can't see the lines inside this, that's the one you do not want. That is your screenshot and that will not work for the rest of this project. So then what we wanna do is just delete that one. So then you're left with this one. And again, remember you can see through that. That's exactly what we want because that's the scan that we have. Okay, we have three objects, right? Three objects. So we're gonna need this three times. So how you do that is Command D, which is duplicate. There's one. And then we'll do Command D again and we'll duplicate again. You can see that my project is gigantic right now. We will change that later. Right now we're just trying to make three separate cuttable or engravable images. Okay, so now I have three copies, right? We're gonna go into the very first one, first one over to the left, and I'm gonna go into this node selection tool, and I only want that all black keychain that's on the very left. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to now, oops, I'm going to now just drag my cursor over all the other nodes that isn't on the black keychain. It's all selected, now I'm gonna press delete. And now you're left with just the black keychain, which is perfect. So then we wanna go back over here into the arrow tool, and now we only have just one black keychain. Okay, let's go down to this bottom middle one, doing the same thing. We're gonna do this nodes tool. Now I want that middle one. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm only gonna select the nodes on that black keychain on the very left, because I already got it. I want to keep that, so I'm gonna go over here to the cowboy hat, and I'm going to select the nodes over here. 
So I'm gonna select some, delete it. There's a little bit left over. So I'm just going to delete the ones I do not want. Okay, there is that. Now let's go back over into here. And I'm sure you've gathered the process. Now we want the cowboy hat. So we're going to select that nodes tool and we're gonna select everything but the cowboy hat nodes and delete. Keep going until you're only left with just a cowboy hat. Okay, then press that arrow tool. I'm gonna drag this over. So when you're setting up for a laser cut file, the back portion, which th that's what this black portion is going to be. I don't want to fill for that. So I'm going to remove the fill. So right click on the fill and I'm going to remove the fill. I'm going to change my stroke. So right click and I'm going to press black and then I'm going to change my cut line. So right click on that number and I'm going to do it at point one. And then I'm going to take this right here because that I want to be an engraving. I am going to then fill this with blue and I am going to take the stroke and I'm going to remove the stroke. And then because we don't have a stroke, it doesn't matter about this, this number right here because we remove the stroke. We are not going to cut this out. We are only going to engrave on it. Okay, selecting shift on your keyboard, let's select those both. So both the keychains and I'm gonna center them. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna center my selections vertically and then horizontally. If this, if this little screen did not pop up for you, you can hit this button right here and then it'll pop up for you. Okay, so a keychain size, I guess just depends on whatever you fancy. Um, I am going to do the lock button and I want my keychain to be 3.25 inches, okay? And I'm just gonna drag this down. I'm gonna put that in there. Okay, so here is that cowboy hat. Let's zoom on in. And it's like extremely large, so let's just make this smaller. Okay, and we had tilted it originally up and down, right? And we kind of want it like facing over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this arrow and we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees because that's the way I want. Because your lock is locked, you can just resize it and it'll stay proportioned. Put that in there. Okay, and I want this to be an engraved file. So the same thing you did before. The fill is currently set to black. I want it to blue. And then I want the stroke to stay as unset, which that's what it is. Okay, going back over into that picture that I was sent, it all it says is let's go girls. Like that's the last thing. So if we come over here into the text box and we'll just pull over here and we'll do let's go girls. And then my text box for my font did not pop up, which is up here. So we're just gonna hit that T for text box and see how it popped up. Okay, so that particular font is called Let Abst uh, Abstract Groovy. If I click on that and then this pop, the font will change and you can see that this right here in the inspo pick equals this right here. If you wanted to keep that, you could. Let uh, Abstract Groovy is a download of font. I'm pretty sure I found it on uh, defont.com. I don't particularly care for that, um, that font only because it's just been seen for so long. So I'm gonna change the font here. Okay, so my favorite like kind of retro groovy um, font is this Am Amotor. I don't even know how to pronounce it. That's like my favorite and I like how it's all like wispy and connects together. It looks a little hippie and funky. So I like that. So selecting both the cowboy hat and the font, and then also my keychain, I'm gonna go over here into align to distribute, and I'm gonna make sure that it's centered correctly. I must have done a very good job aligning this with my eyeballs because I didn't need any of that. Okay, so if you were to save this file just the way it looks, and we import it into the Glowforge app. And this could be even for like Inkscape, um, I'm sorry, for the Cricut Design Space or anything like that. Doesn't matter what it is. If we left it the way it was sitting, you will get this error. Okay, and the error says this design has a text and it's been removed. And if you look over in our keychain, you'll see there is no text there. You're probably frustrated at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that because we don't need it. We're gonna go back into Inkscape. What you need to do is, is you need to select your text and do Command Shift C, or you can come up, or up here into Path and then Object to Path. Then what you wanna do is Command Shift G, which is ungroup, or you could right click and press ungroup. And then what you wanna do is Command Shift and the plus sign, or you can go up into Path and then Union. So that way it is all union together and now a path and not a text box. The 
downside of doing this right now is is if you misspelled anything you cannot go back you cannot edit your text your text so make sure that when you do this your text is fully spelled correctly and looks really good so you don't have any issues later all that said now do we want this to be a cut file we do not we want it to be a engraved file so you want to come down in here and we're going to change it to blue we're gonna make sure our stroke is set to unset. So I'm gonna be engraving this on clear acrylic. So what that means is, is when I engrave it, everything's gonna be clear outside of the engraving. The engraving ends up being like this frosty white color. So when you do that, you always wanna put the engraving on the back side of it. So the front side is nice and smooth and the back side's the ugly. If we think about creating anything, you always wanna like hide the ugly in the back so no one sees it, right? So that's what you wanna do here as well. So we wanna take this, selecting everything, and you wanna come up here and you wanna flip it horizontally. And so now it's not legible. So then what you wanna do is save this. We're gonna go back into Glowforge. And I'm just gonna do this little plus sign, upload, and I'm gonna find my file and upload it in there. And there is my finished file. So everything that is blue is going to be engraved and everything that's gonna, it was left that black line is going to be the cut. So the only thing that we should be cutting is one thing, which is the keychain with the hole in it. What we're gonna do is, is, I already have a clear in here. I always, always, always like to press these three buttons and do a set focus and then just put it anywhere on your material. Okay, when it's done, it'll say ready. And then I'm just gonna drag this over into my area and I'm gonna copy and paste. I need to make 12 of these, so I'm gonna make a few copies. Okay, so when you have as many of keychains that you need, all you wanna do is just press that ready button and your Glowforge is going to start doing all the thinking that it needs to think. And it looks like we are going to be here for a very, very, very long time. So now what you wanna do is go over to your Glowforge and just press that blinking blue button and then we sit and wait for almost two hours. I did wanna show you that with a blinking light, I have an external fan, so I have the fan that's right there. It's hard to see. Always wanna make sure to turn this on high and then press the blinking button whenever it's on. That said, I know I get asked a lot how I vent my machine because I am in a corner that doesn't have a window. My vent is in the back right here and it is going through my socket of my ceiling. After you get done with all the cuts, I just take a plastic razor blade. I can find these on Amazon. I'll link them in the description of the video. But I just take that and remove all the masking tape from the front and back side. Then what you wanna do is grab your keychain hardware and a couple needle nose pliers. Having one for each hand, so you would need two, makes it a lot easier to handle and move the jump rings around. And you can see when I use the jump rings, like I kind of go in an up and down motion. Don't pull them apart because when you push them back together, it is almost impossible to get them to line up correctly. Then you load up your jump rings with the keychain hardware and the acrylic blank. This is like the easiest part of the assembly process. Then when you have it loaded up, you need to take your pliers again and you're going to just close those jump rings together, pushing them like back in the front to back motion and then also close them together. And that is your finished keychain. Look at how cute this ended up turning out. I sure hope I inspired you to make and I will see you later. Bye.